Hello, it is Sunday, October 22nd, 2023. I'm Chris Primo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Sunday crossword, which means a big grid, a big jumbo Sunday grid, and a theme, and a title. You're on to something. I have no idea what that, I don't have any good guesses about that one just yet. Uh, in any case, this mysteriously titled edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Aaron Spiller, Lake House Bros, William Arundel, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them. They are benefactors, of course, of the Daily Self Patreon campaign, and they are sustaining this channel, keeping this whole thing going. I'm very appreciative um, of their efforts. Sorry, there seems to be some sort of insect flying around me. Uh, I'm not appreciative of, of its efforts. Um, in any case, thank you so much if you're a backer of the Patreon campaign. Thank you to everybody who is. And if you'd like to be one, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve. There's a link also in the description field, and there you can find all of the bonus videos available to patrons. And for benefactors, the Let's Check the Crosses official mug. So um, thanks again to everybody uh, as part of that campaign. And thanks if you've subscribed to the channel on YouTube. That's, of course, a very big help. Um, please do so if you've not gotten around to it. Um, and then there's the Daily Solve Discord chat server, which you can join through a description field link as well. It's a nice, friendly chat community over there. All right, so let's get on to the crossword. This is entitled, You're On To Something. Uh, it is, oh, I don't actually remember how many crosswords Robert Ryan has constructed. I think just a few. I think a small handful of puzzles. And it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. It does have a title. It is uniquely titled as, uh, well, Sunday puzzles are uniquely titled. I'm very curious what it means. Let's find out by solving. Let's start solving and see how we do. Small dosage quantities could be cc's um, or so cubic centimeters or uh, mg's milligrams or it's probably one of those. I'm sure it ends in an s. Singer Ronnie of the Ronettes. I don't know. Uh, Dadaist uh, Jean Arp. At least I assume it's pronounced Jean, but um, but there we have it. Maybe it's Gene Arp. I don't know. Uh, I know. I know the name, but <laughs> but uh, have not had cause to say it out loud very often. Eccentrics. Uh, let's see. Who once quipped, I'll, I never forget a face, but in your case, I'll be glad to make an exception. Uh, that's very good. Who do I think that is? Groucho? Groucho Marx? I'm... I'd be sort of surprised if it were just a given a first name and not not a surname in the case of citing a quotation, but it could be. Not sure. That's my guess. It sounds like it would be a Marx Brothers sort of quip. Bowl full with Thai basil and bean sprouts. Right. Okay. Well, this was going to be uh, this is going to be pho. So yeah, that and actually, you know, Groucho would work with mg with milligrams. So let's try it. Let's put this all in and see if we can if we can make it work. Eccentrics, mad, madcaps. Could you could you call a an eccentric person a madcap? I don't think I've heard that before. I think I've mainly heard madcap used as an adjective, a madcap plan. But maybe maybe that's used that way. Play. Yeah. Okay. Maybe it is because play opener would be. Act one. So the literally the opening of a dramatic production would be act one. I'm still not sure about singer Ronnie of the Ronettes, but this probably is Madcaps. Components of some kitschy clocks. Cat eyes? That obviously wouldn't work with Groucho. Some kitschy clocks. I just keep thinking of those sort of, that kind of... Uh, iconic uh, ticking clock with the cat tail going back and forth and the eyes looking back and forth. Um, but that's probably not actually the one that we're thinking of here. It's just what's in my mind. Uh, all right. Unsavory relation. Unsavory relation question mark. I wonder if this means, so you, you look at that and it would, it sounds like a family member who's, I don't know, sketchy, who's involved maybe in, in unsavory things, but the question mark makes this a pun and makes me wonder if unsavory is relating to food in some way. Uh, I'm not sure. 
Okay, what else can we solve? Something a Brazilian is unlikely to wax. That's, that's funny, and probably, again, something punny in some way. I assume it's not re referring to a Brazilian wax, you know, sort of treatment. Uh, but I don't know what it is referring to. Some unique digits abbreviation, probably SSNs, social security numbers, which is a thing in the uh, unique identification in the U.S. In South America, they're known as Galinas del Palo, or chickens of the tree. I don't think I know this. Let's look at the crosses here. Oft relied upon. Trusty, um, true, Footwear craze of the early 2000s. I don't know what what was big in the early 2000s. Crocs, maybe. Uggs, those sort of fur-lined boots. I bet it's those in four letters. Let's see if that works. I still don't know what this is. Greyhounds competition. So it could be the dog, Greyhound, but it could also be the bus operator, private bus operator, Greyhound. Which do I think is more likely? Well, maybe this. There is a long haul bus competitor uh, called Mega Bus. So that could be a competition to Greyhound. So maybe some unique digits. Maybe this is something else. Oh, I feel I'm, I'm piling guess upon guess. I kind of like Uggs as a guess, but now that I don't have anything else in here, I'm not sure that I can justify it. Pop singer Grande to fans. Okay, well, that's certainly Ari, I guess it's pronounced, Ariana Grande. And then sat, sat nav, satellite navigation. Nail polish remover. Um, what is you, what's up? I'm going to, this is going to seem obvious in retrospect, but I can't think right now. Are these, are these, no, I was going to say, I was going to say, could this be bananas? But that makes absolutely no sense. Why would you call why would you call bananas chickens of the tree? That's ludicrous. Uh, it just it just fit with the A-N. So. Porpoise in old usage. I don't know. I don't know. You can see right through them. Probably ends in an S. Soaks. Uh, this could mean to immerse something in water, but it could also mean to, what, basically to con somebody? Jockey for, to jockey for position is to vie for position. Pairing for an entrecote or filet mignon, perhaps. So these are these are cuts of meat. Um, so what would be a pairing there? Oh, a vin rouge, maybe? A red wine? I bet that's it, because red wine would be served with beef, and um, entrecote and filet mignon are both French phrases. So I think we're looking for a French answer here, which would be which would be red wine in French. Yes, a little demon is an imp. So good, we can check the crosses here and this will this will work well. Dismissive rejection, na, maybe N-A, N-A-W or N-A-H, which do I think is more likely? Disposables kept as mementos. Hmm, not sure. What about this one, face palm? I'm, so let's see if you face palm, you say, ah, uh, I'm, can't think. That's annoying. Good gracious. Here we have celebs hangout. A hot spot? No. A celebs hangout. Where would a celebrity be hanging out slangily? Public stance of a member of Congress. I'm guessing these big long uh, answers are theme related. That's just my assumption. In this big grid, I just assume that these are going to be connected. Cliched name for a lab assistant. I think this is a cliche because Igor is so associated with, uh, you know, kind of depictions of the Frankenstein story. Um, let's see. Face palm. I uh, don't know. Disposables kept as mementos. I wonder, if, I wonder if this will be obvious to me when I see it. I can't think what it is now. Singer Easton, no idea there. All right, we need, a, we need a way back into this grid. Components of some kitschy clocks. And something a Brazilian is unlikely to wax. <laughs> really curious about this. Something 
some unique digits, footwell craze. I guess I shouldn't put things in there. Oh, Ronnie Spector. Ronnie Spector. That name sounds familiar to me. Is that... How likely do I... Th cuckoo Clocks. Right. Wow, okay. I didn't. I wasn't thinking of Cuckoo Clocks at all. But yes, a little bird, a cuckoo that comes out of the, the clock to uh, on, the, on the hour, I suppose. And then something of Brazilian is... Oh, ski, ski wax. You could wax skis, but unlikely to do so in Brazil. Of course, a Brazilian could travel somewhere and ski. But um, yeah, the idea is that Brazil itself is not a country with a ski climate. Um, acts coy in salary negotiations does... Yeah, I can't see it. Some unique digits, right? Okay, so this this doesn't end in an S. This one does. Let's put Uggs back in there. Oh, iguanas? That, that sounds reasonable enough. Chicken, I don't know. Why not? Why not call them chickens of the tree? Uh, so there we go. Some unique digits. I, oh, ID number? Is it as simple as that, a sort of generic abbreviation? Okay, so it's not SSNs, which it so often is in the New York Times crossword. Greyhounds com uh, competition. Oh, it is referring to dogs. Dog race. Okay. Yeah, there we go. A greyhound would enter into a dog race. For some reason, I was thinking of another breed that might compete with a greyhound, but that was not a very, that, that's kind of the least likely thing this would be. Um, oft relied upon, uh, which is why I switched to the bus idea. Oft relied upon go-to, your go-to idea, your oft relied upon kind of uh, process or whatever. Acts coin salary negotiations doesn't give, doesn't give an, you know, doesn't give an indication, I guess. If you, I, I don't know. There's something about being coy, obviously, which is what the clue says. Nail polish remover. Oh, acetate or acetone or something. I'm not sure I'm, I know which just off the top of my head, but it'll be something like that. And then what was once yours? Thine, right? Once yours, but no longer, because English sort of shed the informal mode of speech many centuries ago. Uh, for most, for in most places anyway. Porpoise in old usage. I do not know what this is. Oh, a sea hog or something? I think I've heard that phrase before, referring to a porpoise as a sea hog. I mean, not not often, but I do think I've heard it, you know, a handful of times in my life. So that, I hope that's correctly remembered. Um, age for a Latin American celebration. Uh, quinceanera at age uh, 15. That is, I suspect, what is going on here. And blank guards soccer gear. Not sure. Um, summon in a way invoke or, or what, 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 what would this be? Can't think. URL ending. I mean, it could be com, net, org, edu. Yeah, I don't really know how to determine that without the crosses. Uh, oops. Heart pumping activity. Cardio? Cardiovascular activity sort of gets your heart pumping? Could be. You can see right through them. Oh, specs, spectacles, glasses, eyeglasses. Yeah, that could be it. Blank guards, soccer gear, shin guards, summon in a way. URL ending. Okay, edu. Good. That, that how cross was helpful. Went for. If you went for someone, you had at them. You kind of attacked them, either either physically or or verbally, I suppose. Summon in a way. Oh, to page. If a doctor is summoned, they're they're paged. I guess one of the few professions that still uses those little pagers. That that was a, a very quick kind of in and out of consumer level technology, but at least one profession stuck with them, I guess, at least in some cases, I think. Acts coin salary negotiations doesn't, doesn't give a figure. Oh, right. Okay. So you're on to something. So doesn't give a fig is a, you know, it's a, it's a kind of gentle way um, to say you don't care. Doesn't give a fig. Uh, but your U-R-E is literally on that phrase. So you're on to something. Uh, that's how the, the, the theme is working here. So I wonder if we're going to be putting U-R-E at the end of all of these, or if we'll have different ways of sort of spelling the your bit. I don't know yet, obviously, but but that's the theme. I think we've, we've stumbled upon it. 
Okay, soaks. Oh, steeps as in, you know, you could soak a tea bag. You would steep it. Good gracious. Dear me, I think that must be. Face palm. I'm... I still can't see this for some reason. Obviously, a face palm is an expression of frustration, but I just can't think what it what it is. So you might be face palming at my ignorance right now. Dismissive rejection, right? So, oh, ephemera, right? Okay, I shouldn't have put an S there. I, I've made that mistake now at least twice this puzzle of put of pluralizing something with an S where it turned out not to be. Uh, disposables kept as mementos would be ephemera. So a little, a piece of ephemera would be something that was, you know, intended to be disposed of, but you've kept it because it reminds you of something uh, memorable, you know, that, that you'd like to remember. Dismissive rejection. So that looks like nah. And then celebs hang out. Oh, a VIP room, I suppose, just generically. Okay, there we go. And most showily aesthetic would be maybe the artiest thing, the thing that is most showily, uh, you know, kind of, self-consciously, cleverly beautiful. Public stance of a member of Congress, some kind of posture, and there we can see our U-R-E, our your ending. So public stance of a member of Congress. So we need a phrase that ends with post, presumably. Uh, something the post? Um, could be, actually, we could be ending with G. Well, no, that's unlikely. So drift off. I don't know. Nod off. So I guess this could be the word right and then on or in posture. Universal blood type for short. Ooh, I actually don't remember what this is. Is it O negative or something? I, I, I'm not sure. Biblical grandson of Adam and Eve. Enos? And then, oh, I didn't see this. DC tiebreakers at times. Oh, VP is vice president. That's because the vice president in the in the U.S. legislature is also uh, the president of the Senate, so can cast a um, cast a tiebreaking vote if if there's a tie. Okay, universal blood type for short. Uh, well, it's going to be something negative. Shepherd's job, essentially. Interesting. This doesn't. I would have expected this to be a theme answer, but it doesn't end in your. Maybe it starts with your? Uh, and we'll come back to that. A document that may be kept in a lockbox. So a deed, maybe a deed to a, a home, a house or something could be kept in a lockbox. I think this is O negative. The only other word that could go here, if this were, you know, I think the only other letter that would work would be an A, but A negative doesn't sound right to me. I think it is O negative. So... Here we have standoffish. A standoffish person is a bit aloof. And then here we have acetone. So it was not acetate. Good. Small, cute, silly, little, little, a contra you know, contraction of little. And eureka, aha. Oh, wash, uh, right, okay, I should have, should have gotten this. Uh, Washington posture. So a member of Congress's public stance might be a Washington posture because, of course, the legislature is located in Washington, D.C. in the United States. But also Washington Post is itself a phrase, the name of a newspaper. So there we go. Lid malady. So an eyelid malady could be a sty. Uh, there we go. And 1500 Pennsylvania Avenue, e.g., abbreviation. Right. Okay. Quite a lot of Washington, D.C. information going, well, clues going on here because we had Washington posture, but also the uh, VPs and D.C. tiebreakers. So all of it crossing with Washington po posture, which is a nice touch. Uh, anyway, that would be what an address, I guess. Is it as simple as that? Um, I think it must be. Uh, I'm trying to think if I think there's something more clever this could be, but I think it might be that, that straightforward. Let's look at this. Unsavory relation, a sordid tale, right? Okay, so it's not a relation in the sense of a family member. It's something that's been related to you. It's a story. It's an unsavory story, a sordid tale. Nintendo Switch predecessor, so the video game console Nintendo released before the Nintendo Switch was the Wii U. So there we go, a very unusual collection of letters going in the grid. SNL alum Bryant, I, oh, I I so rarely know these SNL alum people off the top of my head, and I don't think I know this one. 
go out with, to date somebody is to go out with them. So it looks like 80 Bryant. Seems like it could be a name. Shepherd's job, essentially. Pasture, oh no, okay. So the your doesn't need to be at the beginning or the end. I was thinking because it was sort of on something, I was thinking it was, you know, it would be at the, in the sense of something's on something, it's kind of on top of it. Uh, this is in the middle, but I, I think that's still, it's perfectly fine. So anyway, pasture something, a, a shepherd tends his or her flock in a, in a pasture maybe. Pasture tending, pasture. I think it's probably starts this way, but let's check the crosses to see. Kitties, pots, right? So this is referring to a betting pool in a gambling context, not a, not a cat. Be a partner with in crimes to abet somebody's criminal activity. Loan word, question mark, loan, soul, solo. Relative of a musette must be an oboe, the instrument. And then business card abbreviation could be tell for telephone number. And then this does look like soul or solo. Uh, some informants informally. Not sure. What about this one? Singer Easton. Oh, right. I didn't know this, but it looks like Sheena or Shira or something. I'm... Um, I... Facebook. Do I have something wrong here? This doesn't look like anything. Oh, I'm a moron. I am a moron. <laughs> Facebook. There we go. Okay. I'm a moron. I didn't see that, uh, which is what makes me one. Okay. Singer Easton. So it looks like maybe it is Sheena. That sounds like it would be a name. Don't think I recognize, the, recognize it here, but let's try it and see. Aquatic barker. Yes. Seals make a barking sound. So you could call them aquatic barkers. And alternative to high water in an idiom. So, right, okay. Hell or high water is an idiom. So, I guess in that in this particular context, hell is the alternative to high water. Because they're separated by an or. Come hell or high water, they would say. Unpleasant surprises when buying concert tickets. Um, hell or high water was also the name of what I thought was a very good movie several years ago. Unpleasant surprises when buying concert tickets are fees, I guess. Unfortunately, hardly even that surprising. Antagonist would be a foe. Um, I saw something actually that uh, California is passing a law that ticket sellers must include all fees in the listed advertised price, which I think is great. <laughs> I think that's a very good thing to be doing and should just be the case generally. I do appreciate that here in the UK and elsewhere in Europe, the um, tax in this, in this case, VAT tax is included in listed prices. You don't need to kind of calculate it in your head, which is nice. Anyway, do something illegal around a basketball hoop. To goaltend, I guess. Um, I don't know enough about basketball to be able to speak about this in any detail, but I guess it must be the case that you're not allowed to kind of be interfering up there. That, that makes sense all the time. I don't know. There's, I'm sure there's a sort of subtle rule around it. Shade of unbleached linen. A crew, maybe? Maybe. Just thinking of kind of off-white. Let's look at the crosses. Head for business. Right, okay, so the head of a company, the head of a business could be the CEO, chief uh, executive officer. To approach somebody or something would be to near them or it, and to heap affection on somebody would be to dote on them. And the parenthetical on here means we're going to be applying on to both the clue and also the answer. So heap affection on, dote on. Part of QED, quad erat demonstrandum, which you can sort of place at the end of a proof to say there, you know, I've, I've proved it, I've demonstrated it. Among others, for short, et al., which is often in a, a list of authors of a, you know, a peer-reviewed paper or, or a book or something like that. Actress Kurilenko of Black Widow. I've not seen Black Widow, but do I know this person? Ilsa, maybe? I mean, I could just be, my brain could just be going there because it seems like sort of an ethnically appropriate name, but I, to Kurilenko, but I think I have, I think I've heard of this person. I'm not 100% sure. Let's try it and see if it works. New blank. Oh, Olga, Olga. That's actually that, you know, that sounds more familiar and it fits with this, which is new ager. Um, or at least that's a thing that it could be if this is a G, which I which I'm now much more confident it is. 
Uh, let's see. Disney's Blank of Arendelle. Is this Elsa from Frozen? I think that's right. Escapes are made by them. I'm not sure what this is looking for, unfortunately. Here, this looks like feature. Newspaper write-up that's light on criticism. Uh, sort of a puff piece or something. Newspaper write-up that's light on criticism. I mean, here we have our, our your at the end yet again. I think so far they've all been spelled the same way, U-R-E. So that might be, that's probably just how they will all be. We don't have very many left, probably two maybe, uh, or three perhaps. Newspaper write-up that's light on criticism. I'm not sure, but we'll get there. Journalist I feel. So Gwen I feel is certainly a name I do know. Turn more heads than intended. Turn more heads than intended. I'm not sure. I assume this will be a theme theme answer. Pop star Rita. Rita Ora is, again, a name I at least know. Memo starter. Could be in re, maybe, to indicate the subject of the, the memo. And number that sounds like a past tense verb. Well, the number one sounds like the past tense verb one in the sense of having won a game. So, served a sentence. If you served a sentence in prison, you did time. And Shepard's job, essentially... Oh, right, yeah, we've already seen this, and I don't know. Highly rated French vineyard. So, cruise. So, this is used to crew to indicate a kind of fine vintage. Um, and then word on an Irish flag carrier. Uh, in three letters, I assume this to be Air from Aer Lingus, which is a major Irish airline. So, so then what would this be? Pa pasture. Surely I have these crosses right. I can't, I can't think what this is. What about this? Take in. To read something, to take it in. And then uh, Issa, who plays President Barbie in Barbie. Uh, Issa Ray, who also cr created the excellent show uh, Insecure. So pasture caring. What is past caring? I don't think I know that phrase. I mean, it must be a phrase because, you know, we, we were adding your to it. So past caring. I wonder if I'm missing something there. Pasture caring. I think this must be right. I don't recognize the source phrase. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll keep going. Hopefully that's right. I guess if it's not, the puzzle won't validate. <laughs> Turn more heads than intended. Allure, allure, yes, allure too well. So to also the phrase, the original phrase is all too well. We add your to that, we get allure too well. In other words, you're turning even more heads than intended because your allure is so powerful. It's, you're alluring too well. Pub lineup could be ales. You could have sort of ales on draft at a, at a, you know, the counter of a pub. The bar, I should say. Well, that was a strange slip. Uh, shares one's bunk. Shares one's bunk lies. So bunk is nonsense, tripe. You know, it's, you're lying to somebody if you're sort of sharing your bunk, I guess you could say, in a, in a punny sort of way. Uh, if you had a following, I guess you led people who followed you. To nourish is to feed some informants informally. Ah, right, okay, stoolies. So there's a, I don't know, I guess roughly kind of mid-century, early to mid-20th century slang for an informant, a, a narc, a grass, a stoolie. Stool pigeon, I guess, where that comes from. So loan word is solo. And then be belonging to a particular time would be of an era, I guess. Seems straightforward. Top of the line Mercedes. I don't know what the top of the line Mercedes is, but I do know that Mercedes have letter classes. So I don't know. I think E class might be one, and I, I, don't, I don't actually know them all. But uh, in any case, that'll be most of the answer. Colorful exclamation in a hospital drama. Code red? Um, code blue? I'm just thinking of code because this starts with a C and that's something you could yell. I have no idea if this is actually correct. Let's just check some crosses and see. Blessing. A boon would be a blessing. Something good that's happened to you. Bungee jumping on Tuesday, skydiving on Wednesday, etc. I don't know. Less trustful of. Let's see, leerier of? If I'm leery 
of your proposal. I'm, I'm not very trustful of it. And once again, as before, the of is applied to both the clue and the answer. Almost spherical in shape. Oblate. So something oblate would have a, a, a kind of oblong, you know, spherically oblong kind of shape. Well, not spherically, but I mean three-dimensionally um, oblong. So it's almost spherical, but not quite. It's rounded. Government funds for mom and pop shops. Oh, um, S SBA loans, small business association loans, I think this would be. Um, I don't really know what's involved in acquiring an SBA loan, but yeah, it is a thing that exists. All right. Uh, 2001 biopic starring Will Smith. That would be Ali, um, of course, about Muhammad Ali. And mother figure would be a nun. So you could have a, a, a mother in a, in a um, you know, a, a, a nunnery, a... Um, why can I not think of that word? I can't think of the actual <laughs> word for that institution. That's infuriating. Um, anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Go out with is to see somebody and a, a convent. That's what I was trying to think of. Uh, okay, sorry. Basis for a fortune teller's romantic prediction would be a love line. Is that is that something on your hand? Is that what that is? I'm not actually exactly sure if that's what that's referring to, but it's, I'm sure that's the answer. Bungie jumping on Tuesday, skydiving on Wednesday. Oh, an ad, adventure calendar. <laughs> okay, because it's, right, we're, we're starting with the phrase advent calendar, which leads up to Christmas, but we're adding your, and we're making an adventure calendar, which might be bungee jumping on Tuesday, skydiving on Wednesday, etc. All right. So munitions compounds, nitros as in nitroglycerin, and uh, you know, used in explosive um, applications. And then small, cutesily, could be teeny, so a cutesy way to say, although this doesn't look good, does it? Show off one's vocal range and stamina. No, I must have something wrong. Munitions combat. Is it nighters, maybe? Up and about. If you're awake, you're up and about, perhaps? This doesn't look good, does it? Um, what else do we have? Unloads in a way. Here we have wired internet letters. DSL, which is a, a wired broadband internet connection in three letters, perhaps. Unloads in a way. Decorative vases. Urns. Up and about. Risen. You're risen. You're up and about. Okay. So this would be teeny. Oh, maybe this is nighters. Unloads in a way. Right, okay, if you're unloading merchandise, you're selling it. Okay, I think this is right. So show off one's vocal range and stamina. Is, oh, endure, maybe? Because I'm just thinking that because of the URE. Let's see if that works here. Face off. Oh, a duel. Oops, I misspelled cells. So uh, face off is a duel. Shrug could be dunno. So here... Brackets can be tricky because it, you, you don't always know if the bracket means that the answer itself will also be nonverbal, or in the case of this clue, at least assuming Dono is correct, uh, that it's simply using that to indicate the existence of a shrug as opposed to the word shrug. Um, so it's not the word shrug, which Dono would not be a synonym of, but rather the action of a shrug as indicated because it's in brackets, which you know, an equivalent of a shrug action could be saying, don't know, shrug. Okay, like some displays of wealth. Um, not sure offhand. Uh, blank Lobel, author of the Frog and Toad series. I think Arnold Lobel is the author of the, the Frog and Toad children's book series. So does that help with this? Shelf one's vocal range and stamina. Endure on a high note. There we go. So that's from the phrase, end on a high note, um, which also is sort of a singing metaphor. But here we have endure on a high note. You hold it to show off your range and stamina. Okay, very good. So a past tense verb that sounds like a number, right? We had the opposite of this earlier when we had the number that sounds like a past tense verb. This time it's the other way around. So I think it'll be eight, which is a past tense verb that of course sounds like the number eight. Batter's objective. A hit, I guess. I mean, that's as that's, that's straightforward as it comes, but could be the answer. Stop obsessing over that. Let it be. Okay, so hit looks good. Uh, to give a ticket is to cite. So right, okay, if a, if a 
I don't know, police officer, say, gives you a ticket. They cite you. They give you a citation for some kind of infraction. And then a batter's need... I'm looking at this and I'm thinking of Ebo people, but just because I, I can't think of anything else that fits here. Maybe this isn't let it be. Batter's need. Eggs? So batter in the sense of something you might bake with? It is. Okay, stop obsessing over that. Let it go, not let it be. Okay, there it is. So uh, the world's best-selling planes. Cessnas, I suppose? That's interesting. Wow, I, w I wouldn't have known that. That's very interesting. Um, I suppose I suppose it makes sense that they would sell more than, you know, Airbus or Boeing because they're much smaller and they're selling to the private market. I, that's still kind of surprising to me, but I guess they're... Oh, but they probably also sell lots of really small planes for sort of amateur aviators and things. I guess that makes sense. Okay, anyway, wrecked... Um, wrecked. Why do I not see what this... Oh, shot, as in, yeah, my vehicle is shot, it's wrecked. Okay. And then diagnostic using an injected tracer. It's a dye test, right? When dye is injected so that it can be seen and helps to um, diagnose, you know, potential illness. So Blank Foundation for Justice, International Human Rights Group. Uh, oh, Clooney, is this... Is this sort of George and Amal Clooney? It must be. Uh, so then what about this? It can be a strain on the pupils. Council, uh, oops. I wonder if pupils here is referring to students as a bit of misdirection, because obviously you read this and you think it's, it feels like it's referring to eye strain, but I, I bet it's not. But I don't quite see what it actually is. British reference work abbreviated. So I think probably the OED, the Oxford English Dictionary, which is a very famous reference, you know, sort of famously enormous reference work, and it's abbreviated that way. A abroad could be un in French. Could also be una, actually, in, in Spanish, right? Or, or Italian. Wear down. No, it's in French, because here we have wear down as a road. Um, and then escapes are made by them. Hmm. Is this not a feature? This looks like council. Escapes are made by them. What am I missing here? I feel as though I must have something wrong. Let's, let's go down here. Oops. Web portal with a Bing search bar <laughs> must be MSN, the Microsoft network, which I've not thought about in a very long time um, because Bing is Microsoft's search engine. And then swamp-like is miry, maybe? Not really an adjective I've, I've heard much, but swamp-like, so like a mire, miry, maybe? Not crazy about that word, but it, it's probably a real word. Blank flow, song by Enya. Oh, Aaron, Aaron Oko. Orinoco Flow is a song by Enya, which I think I've seen cited maybe at least once before in the crossword, perhaps. Gadget for a wine enthusiast. Oh, I don't know what this would look like. or <laughs> I think this is because aerating wine is something people, people certainly talk about, which I think is why you decant it. But there must be a device that would allow you to do that more quickly that is a wine aerator i'm sort of guessing here but i bet i bet that's the case and then nightfall would be sunsets day sets no downside a con would i uh, know it's not set anything downside is a con a negative element of something and then o'hare identifier this is referring to chicago o'hare um airport whose identifier is Ord, O-R-D, which is from its much older name, Orchard Field, I think. And then Nightfall, oh, Day's End, there we go. Okay, uh, so here we have mens rea, uh, legal concept, uh, which we've actually encountered, I think, several times, a handful of times in the crossword. And then, oh, course load, course load. So escapes are made by them, Ford. Oh, <laughs> 
The Ford Escape is a vehicle. Okay, that completely escaped me until I got it through the crosses. But there we go. That's what it is. All right. So, ah, no mean feature. At least people write up that's light on criticism. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not being mean. It's not being cruel to its subject. But it's coming from the phrase no mean feat. That was no mean feat, you might say, if you were impressed by something someone did. And, of course, we add your to the end. Okay, like some displays of wealth, obscene, right? You could refer to obscene wealth if it's, you know, incredibly sort of crass and and over the top. In the altogether uh, is a way to refer to somebody being nude. And then an object with one hole or two, depending on whom you ask. A tube? Right, I guess I see what this means in the sense that you could describe a tube as having a hole at either end, or you could describe a tube as having one hole that is simply, you know, very deep. Um, and I guess I understand why someone would choose either of those descriptors. So in the, I've never, never occurred to me to um, think of this as something that would divide people. But yeah, it's a, it, I think that must be the answer. I hope it is. I like it if so. Road workers gloop would be tar. You could tar a road and... They're crazy, which would be fads, because a fad is a craze. So I think that's just how this is being referred to here. And then finally, fox coverage would be fur, um, which because fur literally covers foxes. You see foxes absolutely everywhere here in London. It is, I still find it incredibly delightful to just be walking along the street and there's a fox. Um, anyway, there we go. That was the Sunday crossword entitled You're On to Something involving our sort of app, uh, kind of appending of your to a number of common phrases. So we, we turn doesn't give a fig into doesn't give a figure. Uh, the Washington Post into a Washington posture. Past caring. I'm still not quite sure about this one. Into pasture caring. All too well into allure, allure too well. No mean feet into no mean feature. Do, do, do. Uh, advent calendar into adventure calendar. And finally, end on a high note into endure on a high note. So there we go. A very nice uh, Sunday puzzle with an appropriately um, constructed title. With, I think, not too, not too challenging overall, um, a difficulty level, but not a pushover either. I mean, I, there were definitely parts I had to revise some early guesses. And um, I think this was, I think this is what, about what we look for in a Sunday puzzle. Not brutal, but uh, not a complete walk in the park. So there we go. That was the Sunday crossword. I enjoyed it. I hope you did as well. And we'll be back tomorrow with the Monday crossword, a much simpler puzzle, a much smaller puzzle, mainly. Um, but still with a theme. So do join me then. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Sunday. Take care. Mm -hmm.